I live in a town where you can still hear church bells chime on a Sunday morning, where families gather with pride to watch their children grow like flowers in the sun. We honor the brave who sacrificed for our country and those who continue to serve and protect us. In the spirit of love, belonging, and acceptance, this program was created. I'm Marie Wyman, and welcome to Close to Home. Welcome to Close to Home. Today we have as our guests Christopher Lindquist, Director of the Northboro Library, and Justin Souza, Director of Central Massachusetts Veterans Service District. Good to have you both here today to discuss the importance of the referral needs of our veterans. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you so much, Marie. Yep, it's great and, to see you. And welcome, Justin. We're going to get right to it. Um, we talked the first time around, I think, Chris, about the library not being your mother and father's library. That's true. Not even our library anymore. That's true. It's so technical now, and it offers so many wonderful uh, services. So I just want to get into partnering with Justin in Veteran Affairs. So tell us a little bit about what's going on with the veterans. So, um, you know, Justin is relatively new uh, to the area, and, mm -hmm. he, and he uh, came into the library one day, and he said he was interested in uh, partnering with the library and possibly, you know, having some quarterly meetings for veterans um, so that they could come and meet at the library and hear about the programs and services that are available um, to veterans, you know, both state and mm -hmm. federal. So I think that's really where it all started. And, um, you know, I'm interested in uh, bringing the library to the community and, and, and trying to partner with many organizations. So um, that's an opportunity for the library. And I think um, we're going to continue to talk about how we can serve the needs of veterans. I'm amazed at so many things that the library does during the year. That's <laughs> only one part of it. We're mm -hmm. not going to talk about the other part. But uh, Justin, tell us a little bit about your job description and what you actually do. Uh, well, I'm a, a <coughs> town employee um, paid by the four towns in the district, Grafton, uh, Shrewsbury, Westboro, and Northboro. And I act as a liaison between the state and federal programs available for veterans and the local veterans in, in town here. Mm -hmm. um, if they have any type of question regarding any veteran issue, uh, they can come to me, and if I don't have an answer immediately for them, I will find an answer. So in other words, you assist veterans in assessing and navigating the federal, state, and local programs. And right. that can be rather challenging because yes. the bureaucracy, we all know there's a bureaucracy, but it's very difficult when you need services. So mm -hmm. how does that key in with, uh, with what you've done in the past too? Um, I used to work for a nonprofit that mm -hmm. uh, provided in, uh, crisis management and um, emergency funds for homeless veterans to help get them off the street and into mm -hmm. uh, permanent shelter. Mm -hmm. um, having that background, uh, if a veteran is in crisis, um, which I haven't come across many in town here, thankfully, um, I have that option to refer them out to that nonprofit. Um, but that's also, that geared me up to learn about the VA process uh, mm -hmm. for service-connected claims, uh, non-service-connected pension requests, um, death and burial benefits, mm -hmm. and uh, those, those seem to be the most um, active requests coming into my mm -hmm. office. So when you talk about claims, um, there's probably uh, a ton of paperwork that goes along yes. with that then, right? Yes. And if someone, a lay person, uh, when they're trying to navigate the system, it can be very difficult, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. there so. are um, on average about four or five forms, and those can be anywhere from one to ten pages long. Wow. That you typically fill out with the veteran when they come and mm -hmm. uh, ask to help, ask for help with a service-connected claim. Mm -hmm. And and I I know um, how how did you become uh, you know interested in this type of work and and how. I know the answer, but I want our audience to know too. So if you'd like to share that, that would be great. Uh, well, um, having served in the military for seven years, when I got out, um, I was looking for service again. Um, I really liked that aspect of being in the armed forces, serving the, the, uh, the country, but I'm, uh, I was looking for something more local to serve um, mm -hmm. in our, our area, or at least in our state. 
and I worked, uh, I worked for the National Guard for a little while, and a friend got me into the nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. helping, um, helping veterans who really needed it. And then uh, from that, I, that was a stepping stone that allowed me to um, get into this director position as a, mm -hmm. uh, for the town. So if you, you, not that, you know, we know your job is important, but if you had one aspect of the job that you felt was more critical than, than perhaps any other part of the job, what do you think it is today? Uh, I would say communication um, with the veterans. Mm -hmm. When uh, someone calls and they leave a voice message or someone writes an email, the fact that I typically get back to them within the same day, mm -hmm. they're very appreciative and, and always thank me profusely just for just for returning their mm -hmm. call. Because mm -hmm. um, I imagine with the VA uh, especially, sometimes you dial the 1-800 number and you get a computer and you don't know what button to press and then mm -hmm. you on hold for an hour. and. You know, it's very impersonal, um, so I try to, I, I think communication is a very personal touch. And I think you're right, you are 100% right, because in every uh, aspect of today's society, we're becoming more and more technical, mm -hmm. and um, when we look around, it's the personal touch yep. that means the most to people, mm -hmm. whether or not it's just a kind word, um, gee, I think I, I can direct you to the right place. Um, but then if you have the first-hand knowledge of it, it it's just a boon. Yeah. And to have a real person, you know, there's so many robocalls that's now. It, that's that's a wonderful service, and that that is such a, you know, a, a wonderful. And I know a lot of the older generation veterans um, from Korea and Vietnam right. in particular, uh, they really enjoy the one-on-one. -on -one. They'd rather talk with someone and ask that person the questions than call someone and speak to someone on the phone mm -hmm. even. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they, I think that really benefits them. Um, and, and you know what's even one more, if you can say, uh, better, is the fact that we have in our town, we have such a great town, and we have in our town people like Chris that our director, you know, is in that position where he can do something. Mm -hmm. um, many people, um, it's you, you know, in any organization that you run into, people always make suggestions, but they're not in a position to do anything right. about yeah. it. Right. But Chris, tell us more about. I would love to, Marie. So you know, go on. I love to hear about the veterans. Is a community resource, and that's I guess the message that I'd like to kind of impart today is the library is for everybody, and that we are a warm, welcoming place. If there are veterans in the community who are looking for information, who don't know where to turn, who are looking for uh, information about benefits or you know services for veterans, certainly Justin is the is the go-to guy. But if there's uh, information that we can help them find, we have computers. We obviously have you know um, high-speed internet access. People mm -hmm. can come in if they want to apply for a job. If they're doing you know working on their resume, we can help them with that. Um, we have a lot of books. So I had one of my reference librarians um, go online, and we can find you know many many books about coping with PTSD. We can refer people to um, local, state, federal agencies. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of information that's online now, obviously, and you know sometimes navigating all of the right. information right. is challenging. So our reference librarians are trained to help people. Mm -hmm. So if if somebody wanted to come in and just sit down one on one with a reference librarian and go online, oh, that's a good thing to they know, can Chris. do that. Sorry, we have English as a conversation service. We, if people have um, you know, English language uh, needs, we have that type of program. So computers, um, conversation circles. Um, if, wow. if, if a group of veterans wanted to form a book discussion group, there are some libraries that support um, you know, a, a group of, of people that get together and they discuss mm -hmm. uh, issues of, of commonality. We could form a book discussion group at the library and we could support wow. that. So I think it's really a, a, a community resource mm -hmm. and whether it's programming or access to information, um, helping with the job search, I mean, that's the type of uh, services we provide. And you also, um, you know, just um, you're just the, the, the Renaissance man here. <laughs> you also um, just had last night, uh, yes. uh, tell us about um, Matt. Matt. Um, he is a very interesting artist. So Matthew Mitchell yeah. is an artist from Amherst, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and f since 2005, so I actually met Matt probably back in 2007, 
he started this project called the 100 Faces of War Experience. Mm -hmm. And it's a, an amazing project. Um, he has painted 100 portraits of veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan. And he has gone out and interviewed them. And, along, and these are you know, full-size portraits, wow. oil paintings of 100 veterans. Mm. And this exhibit is now traveling um, under the auspices of the Smithsonian traveling exhibits. So wow. you can I I imagine it has a lot very of very high quality yes. and, and amazing, powerful stories that go along with each portrait. Mm. So Matt just came um, the other night and he talked a bit about this you know, nine, 10 year long project that he's been working on. And, wow. and it's really a labor of love for him. Um, and very powerful. I think he said there are about 20 veterans that are from the Massachusetts area. And yep. many of them wow. come to the exhibit. He's tried to get one from each state, from he each said. State. Oh, wow. Exactly. I didn't know so that. So, at least. Once wow. I met up with Justin, I said, you know, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Matt Mitchell, he's right here in Massachusetts. He has this incredible, um, you know, exhibit. He wants to um, find a permanent venue, first of all. So it's not in a permanent location at the moment. It's going to mm -hmm. be traveling around the country. But at some point, I think it really deserves to be in a permanent location in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And so Justin and I mm -hmm. said, well, maybe there's a way we could look for a venue you know, that has uh, adequate um, wall space and parking and accessibility somewhere in the central Worcester region. Yeah. That's and kind and of that's, uh, we can appeal to our viewers, actually. For sure. If anybody knows um, of, of, a of, of a venue that, that could be appropriate for this ty type of exhibit, that right. would be wonderful. So it needs um, to be 300 linear feet. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of mm -hmm. like the, the minimum amount of space that it needs. And again, um, ideally it would be in, in, a, in a building that's accessible and that has some adequate parking. Mm -hmm. I will just say that the website for that is http colon slash slash 100 100 facesofwarexperience.org. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you can go and find out and you can see each of the 100 portraits. Mm -hmm read about the stories and read about this amazing project that Matt Mitchell We will done. actually put that at the end of the program as reference. We always try to give our viewers that opportunity Great. to, you Great. know, reinforce what we say during our discussion. So that that's, that's, that would be great. So wonderful. we'll we'll do that. Thank you. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about Matt is his background? Yeah. What so is Matt his background? Is actually um, he he was trained as an artist. He went to um, an art school down in, in New York City. And, um, you know, I think what he uh, realized is that veterans don't necessarily talk about their experiences during the war, which we all know. And, yes. and he wanted to start a conversation uh, between veterans and civilians. And so this mm -hmm. is kind of a conversation starter. And he realized um, in talking to the parents and talking to the vets that this these are stories that need to be told. Oh, absolutely. So Iraq and Afghanistan, if you're a civilian, you don't necessarily know the experience, right, intimately. You read about it in the news, mm -hmm. but you don't really don't know about yeah. all of the uh, emotional challenges, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And so by you know doing the portraits and then each individual story, uh, Matt doesn't interpret the stories. He just lets the veterans tell their story. He has the had the veterans submit, submit their, own their own statement. Oh, really? When Is he was painting the that's, painting, that's, I was wondering yeah, how he how organized his thoughts yes. and how he interpreted you know, what was yeah. given him. Yes. So actually it is the story mm -hmm. of that person. That's correct. Oh, and okay. so there are a hundred incredibly unique, diverse stories, yeah. very mm. powerful. Mm. Yeah. And that's great. So we if you go to the that. exhibit, when I was working out in Westfield at the Westfield Athenaeum, we had 50 of the portraits. He hadn't finished oh, the, wow. all, all 100 at that point. And just seeing them all in one location is so, I mean, you just spend time there and you really get to learn, you know, right. the diversity. Mm -hmm. People from all backgrounds, some Native Americans, right? And, mm -hmm. and others from all over the country, women as well as men That's who serve. Yeah. And just hearing mm -hmm. their stories. And, um, you know, we're all Americans. And I think it's important to kind of have these conversations, and that's really, mm -hmm. the, the map and, is really and you know, at the about. rate at the rate that our um, our elder mm -hmm. veterans mm -hmm. are passing away, it's very alarming that a lot of their uh, stories will never be heard. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's really valuable to I the community. So. Yeah. I remember um, having written um, stories about veterans um, in my writing career. 
I remember so many poignant aspects sure. of stories that I heard. When you heard these stories, you were walking on sacred ground. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I think people really Absolutely. appreciated that. Yeah. Because m most often, these the older men were told to just get on with their lives. That's right. You know, you had to stuff it in and not talk, not talk about, about it. it. And a lot of them never talked about it. Right. I right. mean, even right. even people that I knew sure. personally, relatives, sure. I would I would hear after the fact, mm -hmm. many, many, many years later, mm -hmm. that they were in the theater of operation mm -hmm. in Europe mm -hmm. or they were in the Philippines or they were here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Really? Uncle you know, Uncle Julius, what? Yes. what? you know, and yes, and that's how that it generation. went. Yeah, that, that's that stigma. generation. Nowadays, I think there's so much greater awareness about PTSD, correct? I mean, just oh, yeah. obviously knows. Right, right. There's still a, a large part of the culture in the military of, you know, man up. Suck it up. Uh, yeah. Suck it up mm -hmm. and, you mm -hmm. know, don't worry about it until later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They are making a lot of strides. Uh, and one of the people that uh, Matt Mitchell painted was actually a social worker. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember what branch he was in. Right. But he he was there to uh, counsel uh, as a trauma counselor for veterans after they had been in action. They would have to go see him and speak. Mm -hmm. And now I can tell you from my own personal experience that when you go speak with them, you don't want to talk to them. You're yeah. there because you have to be. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's not until mm -hmm. you get out that um, you're not in the mindset anymore of being in the military that. Mm -hmm the PTSD really starts to, in, in, my, in my experience at least, and what I've seen with some of my friends, is it starts to surface well after you've been yeah. in the service. It's a delayed reaction yes, almost, very much. isn't it? Well, I remember, I don't know, you, you, you fellas probably <laughs> remember this movie, but um, there was a war movie, and I think it was Saving Private Ryan Saving or mm -hmm. something. Ryan, yes. And um, it, correct me if I'm mistaken, yes. but I think it was the scene where, um, they were on the beach and I think they were landing at, you know, one of the mm -hmm. beaches and a fella in the theater, I mean, he wrote about this later. Mm -hmm. He yeah. stood up and said, that's me, that's me, wow. that's me. That's oh, wow. exactly what I did, did. that's me. Wow. And many people in the audience that went to see the movie mm -hmm. or subsequent movies sure. about sure. World War II yeah. and all these stories are lost. Yeah. You know, right. we if we do a movie, it's almost like a conglomerate right. of all different experiences, sure. not that one person. But this guy, it was like he really did think he, it was him. <laughs> yeah, he just said, "Oh my God, that's me," and that goes to show you that it's a universal, oh, absolutely, kind of experience. Yeah. Yes, and you know, post-traumatic stress disorder sure. is nothing new. Sure, sure, right. that's right. And now it, just ha it has a name now. They've identified, right. you know, and exactly. they're, they're exploring. Right. Exactly. The different types of PTSD that yeah. you can have. Exactly. And coincidentally, of course, right now is the whole Vietnam experience, which is happening, the 18-hour uh, project that Ken Burns has been working on. That's oh, on yeah. public yep. television. Yeah, so, I, I remember I mean, that's another about kind that. of Vietnam was mm -hmm. a totally different war, obviously. Right. The experiences right. of the veterans when they came back after that war was much different than the World War II veterans. Right. right. Mm -hmm. I remember a friend of ours, he, he uh, served in Vietnam, and, uh, and he came back, and he was he had a bar one day and somebody turned around and said he was in his uniform mm -hmm. but you know because yeah. you know he was just, just got back. out and he didn't have a lot of walking around clothes and uh, someone turned to him and called him a baby killer yes. and no. he was like I didn't kill any babies of course not. Mm -hmm. you know no. I, I, I mean and that's the kind of war it was I remember reading about a veteran that went somewhere and came back. I think he went to visit Vietnam mm -hmm. with a group of people. And when he came back, there was a big uh, outpouring of support for him and people yes. like him. Mm -hmm. And he said, he, he started weeping. Yes. And he said, this is the only time anybody ever acknowledged what I did Amazing. and what I did for my country. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it was. But people today, are much more inclusive. I think so, yes. Yeah. They are much more inclusive. We hope that our veterans are treated the way they should be oh, treated, absolutely. with respect and dignity. Absolutely. And, and uh, the other part of that, too, is the uh, wall. And the wall, the T moving tell wall. Tell us about that, So too. I wasn't aware of the moving wall. So, so the Vietnam Memorial down in Washington, D.C. is mm -hmm. obviously a permanent uh, exhibit. But Justin had told me there's also a moving 
wall, which is a replica, I guess. Maybe yes. you can talk about that. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, from what I've, uh, I've read, I've, I've not actually, I saw it many years ago in Dartmouth. It came to UMass Dartmouth, and I lived in Dartmouth growing up, so um, I got to see it. And they set it up there, and I believe it's a, a full-size replica that travels, um, and it has every name that the monument in D.C. has on it, and oh, they wow. set it up in a very similar mm -hmm. fashion, I believe, mm -hmm. to how it's set up down in D.C., mm -hmm. and um, you can walk by and see, and um, nice. they've recently had it come to Massachusetts. It was in Haverhill um, a okay. few months ago, mm -hmm. and I believe last month in August it was down in uh, Wareham. In Wareham. Oh, wow. Um, so that's, again, yeah. maybe an opportunity. If we could bring it to yeah. Northboro or some location within driving distance. Right, yep. could be and right. I appeal to any of our viewers yep. that if they have the withdrawals or the capacity <laughs> mm -hmm. or the feng shui to <laughs> be able to make this happen, yeah. that would be wonderful because we're basi basically here today to honor veterans. For sure, absolutely. Um, you know, our veterans are very important to us. Veterans Day is mm -hmm. coming up. Yes, and we need to be uh, you know, cognizant of the fact that they have sacrificed so much for us yep. that we have our value. And, and the website, if I may, on that one, Marie, is um, www.themovingwall.org. And okay. so that's another website maybe you could put on at mm -hmm. the end. Again, <laughs> at the end of the okay. program, we will show all these pertinent websites so people okay. can get a handle on Terrific. it. Terrific. And, uh, you know, what, this, this really means we want to open this up for dialogue. Yes. Yeah. We, want, we want people who have something yep. that they need to do to contact either one of you mm -hmm. if they have a need Absolutely. that they can contact Chris can at, contact the library, at the library Absolutely. and and Justin and and may, we'll put the web you know your websites yep. and your emails okay. and we'll you start know get people yeah start a conversation and and you know the, to kind of wrap up the program but I I wanted to um, get to one other important issue I wanted to talk about sure. too. Um, in this um, day and age, um, when a lot of people are um, looking for services, um, you know, we have a website that they can go to, yep. uh, you know, kind of a local thing. Mm -hmm. But what if they need something a little bit more beyond the scope of what you handle? Now, tell us how you would handle someone that came with an issue that was a little bit maybe beyond what you handle. Um. So I, I'm trying to think of... Uh, Who would you go to for that? Or what would you put in place? Uh, you would refer, say for instance, someone had an issue that they, they really weren't getting anywhere around in a local fashion. Okay. And you thought, well, maybe I can... I would try to find out um, you know, what exactly they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and if it, in this instance, is outside my scope, I would uh, reach out. There's. Uh, veteran service officer for each town in Massachusetts. And some of them have been there for many years. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I reach out to the Lemonster VSO a lot. Um, okay. He's very knowledgeable in, in um, Veterans Affairs. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the State Department of Veteran Services. Okay, that's one, that the one coordinates. I was, yeah. yeah. And are yeah. they in Boston? Um, they are in Boston, yep. And every year, the Massachusetts Veteran Service Officer Association meets in Lemonster for a three-day mm -hmm. conference. Okay, And uh, great. that's coming up. Uh, soon in uh, October. Okay. So I'll be experiencing that for the first time this year, mm -hmm. and they have uh, every VSO veteran service officer goes. That's what I was getting. So at. they'll yeah. be um, sharing information. A right. large sharing. opportunity for networking. Networking, is, basically. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, networking. This, this job is very personal. Uh, right. So mm -hmm. you know, creating that relationship with fellow VSOs is very important because they may know the answer to a question that mm -hmm. I, I'm asking because exactly. I don't know. Um, exactly. So that's that's typically what I would do um, mm -hmm. is, is find the information mm -hmm. I, I, I'll look until I find an answer and I won't give up. <laughs> well thank you so that's much great. I mean um, that is a wonderful if I may um, yeah, I'm sorry uh, my my intent with getting uh, in touch with Chris um, right. specifically is uh, I've wanted to do an educational brief or class mm -hmm. um, I'm doing one with the senior center for the older veterans that in, go to the senior North center yep. but then I was thinking well Justin, as a 30-something-odd-year-old <laughs> veteran, I don't want to go to the senior center for <laughs> veteran information. That's where old people go. Well, <laughs> so we'll get there sooner. I got in touch with Chris because my idea was uh, one, you know, 
um, younger veterans that have kids, maybe, or families. Exactly. They've been to the library, hopefully. Right. If not, this is a good, uh, uh, a good opportunity to engage them yep. mm -hmm. in the library mm -hmm. and to help bring a little more foot traffic to the library. And also, it's, it's a place where younger veterans won't have a stigma of, uh, right. I, sh I, sh I don't really feel comfortable being here. It's a library. It's totally Everyone right. goes to the library. Right. So yes. that was my intent with partnering with Chris to, to try and do a class there mm -hmm. um, to and get better. you call it a class. It might be an information session. A class, some briefing, kind of presentation. Yeah. Yes. It's everything. Yeah. All and of those would, wrapped in one. When would that be put um, into I don't place have a hard date set yet. Uh -huh. um, I'm doing the pilot in Grafton with the Grafton assessors. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, tax benefits available to oh, veterans with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a... Uh, tax exemption that you can apply for Good. and she's doing a, a presentation on that and asked me to partner with her at the senior center right. so nice. um, I'm doing that class first in October and then sometime thereafter I'll be yeah. uh, getting in with Chris once I have the class um, right. the presentation and, and completed. we could do it maybe on a quarterly basis it could and be that's what I'm thinking yeah evening. it could be on a Saturday yep. I mean however it that's works. really yeah. wonderful I yeah. really love to hear stuff like that that's great a, well we'll definitely keep you updated yeah, on, and we always schedule. will update our information on our website which is mm -hmm. www.northboroughlibrary.org okay. <laughs> and then my website is uh, central mass veter uh, central mass vets .org. That's wonderful. Uh, and one I, one final that. question, okay? So in your dream world, we'll go to Chris <laughs> yeah. first, because you know he's sure. he's he's an informational, <laughs> uh, he he's a conduit right. for information. Um, in your ideal world, sure. What would you like to see the library like in the future? Oh, brother, that's a wonderful question, Marie. So if I had to dream, well, I I think that the library is changing, and because of technology. But the thing is, is that people still want that human connection. And so the library, I think, mm -hmm. is that third place. It's not your house, it's not your work. It's that third place in the community where you can meet. And so I just want to continue to kind of develop that aspect of our community mm -hmm. services. People come together and they can talk about things. There's various forums, programs. It's a place, it's our place to connect. That's what our tagline is, your place to connect. To connect. So. That's a wonderful answer, Chris. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> so how about you in the future? What, you're a young man. You have your whole life ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And you, you will see numerous changes in mm. the veteran scenes. Oh, yeah. Because as new veterans come into, you know, their own mm -hmm. and they have to have services and so forth. But what would you like to see, Jay? Uh, well, I'd like to see... Uh, I'd like to see some of the veterans organizations in town, like the VFW and the American Legion um, and AMVETS. I'm not sure if there's an AMVETS here. Um, and then uh, there's a new one that's been started that they don't actually have uh, facilities in the area, um, but the IAVA, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans, oh, or Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans mm -hmm. uh, of America, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see more involvement from our younger veterans in some of these veteran organizations. Um, and ultimately, I would like to see every veteran in town know, uh, get educated on all the veteran benefits available to them. That's, right. that's my intent as the Director of Veteran Services, so great. Great. Is, is to educate and uh, ha help them access those yes. benefits. Well, thank you both <laughs> for being on the show today. We tried very hard today to respect our veterans and give them a sense of everyone is in there. Mm -hmm. in their circle and we love them and we want them to go where they need to go to get services and Chris is is here um, in Northboro at the at the library and he's done a wonderful job and Justin is young and upcoming and he's doing a wonderful job also so we I'm, thank them I'm here on Wednesdays in uh, Northboro and I have walk-in hours from 9 to 12 uh, so any veteran can come in without an appointment during that time and I'm also available by appointment whenever uh, veteran needs me. Uh, they all. don't have to, after hours, um, on the weekend if it's necessary, if that's the only time they can meet, they just have to call and make the appointment with well, me. Well, thank you very much, Justin, and thank you, Chris, uh, thank again, you. Thank you, for being an articulate Thanks and intelligent so speaker, <laughs> the both of you. <laughs> thank you. And um, we'll talk to you next time on Close to Home. Mm -hmm.